Welcome to another episode of Knives Monroe versus the podcast. I'm Knives Monroe. How you guys doing? Hopefully you're doing well. I'm with a dear friend, Dave Knopp, who was the first guest on this show. We recorded it. We recorded it in uh, Washington D.C. or maybe just outside, and and now we're doing it remote. So, Dave, how you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, it is. It's a it's a lot different experience when it's remote because you get that instant interaction. That's got a little delay, so there'll probably be a little talking over each other, but whatever. Yeah, I'll work on that. Good, I, I know I could. I know I could transition to Skype and do it that way. And supposedly, there's this is where we get nerdy. There's less latency, and I can get your video. I can get my video, and then that's a that's a thing. And I'm I'm working that out. I've been trying different ways that are the most effective, the fastest, the cleanest, the best looking, the best sounding ways to do this, and. The one that where I can just kind of sit in and press a button, I'm gonna I'm gonna find that way to do it. And so I don't know if I'm going to. I feel like Skype is too high maintenance for most people. Anytime I've talked to people on Skype, it's, a, it's just easier to call them because I don't want to. I don't want people to download something. And then I think when I did it with mm-hmm. Luke Newman, I think he had to download Google Hangouts on his phone. But it's like, dude, no. I all I had to do was call you, and so. It, it, I, it's just easier to be like, yeah, just answer your phone and let's just talk like it's a phone call, you know, to me anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things I don't, I'm not, I don't keep up with all the technology on the phone, but I'm amazed at how low quality Skype is for audio. And it's like, I know uh, maybe they've changed some things since I've used it last, but the last time I tried to do the same thing, I did, a, it was a video podcast and we were Skyping in and it was like a major delay and it was, it, uh, it was bad. Yeah. No, <laughs> anyways. thanks. Um, so you, you texted me out of the blue and said, let's do a podcast, brother. Pretty much. No, it was my idea. And, uh, you mentioned that you, you wanted to get into TikTok, uh, before we get into it, because I'm curious what you have to say, what the state of the union of TikTok is on your behalf. But, um, I uploaded a TikTok that I made. I was on the phone with someone who was asking me like filmmaking questions and I was like, dude, you should get on TikTok because they're a musician. And I'm like, this is the American Idol right now of America. Like, you got to just get on TikTok and put your little songs out there. They could be six second videos, one minute. Mm-hmm. And then I was, as I was telling this guy uh, who, who called me on Facebook to do a TikTok video, I was like, let me do one. I was making lunch. And so I made the one that I made and it got like 1600 views organically. Like, my videos don't do that. Last time I got views like that, I made a feature film, you know? So it's that's got to mean something. I don't want to I don't want to go into TikTok and be a TikToker per se, but, like, the numbers are there. The people are there. The audience is a plenty. So I thought that was shocking. Like, those are crazy numbers. And you have some insane numbers. You have some that are, like, in the six figures, don't you? Um, no, I don't know. I, that's where I've been trying. I've, I, that's what, yeah, I had to text you because I've been deep. I was like, you know what? I'm going, I'm going to go all in the last three days. I've been wasting so much time. I would consider, I would call it wasting. Anyone would (laughs) neglecting actual work, but I'm like, I got to learn this because, um, yeah, I don't know I've been trying to watch the numbers, but the amazing thing about, I would say being a little older and having the experience of vine, the original vine, um, app, all of these the emotions are coming in, like I re, like memories of what that was like when it first started picking up. But it's completely different. But it's also the same. But that's why I was like, I I texted you because I'm like, okay, so I got to talk to someone about this because it's. I know everyone's talking about it, and there's so many different. There's a couple different levels I want to get into just because I know you've talked about it a lot about the the would have could have getting into vine, yeah. And I know a lot of people have that same thing and they're jumping into TikTok full blast. You'll actually see a lot of Viners on TikTok doing it, trying to, I don't know, it's different because if you're familiar with their faces, it seems like they're like has-beens. I don't know what this is. For me, at least, I seem like, oh, I've seen this guy. I've already spent enough hours watching his stuff. I'm going to move on. But they're doing really well, it seems like, there. But it seems like a lot of people are like, this is my chance. It's sort of like going to college. I was quiet in high school. Now's my chance to be loud and outgoing in college. Mm. And I feel like it's like they missed the boat with Vine. And I don't know, was there anything else since Vine? 
nothing. There hasn't really um, been. There was like that weird Vine 2 rumors that just never happened. The Vine but. 2 thing, which were all unsubstantiated rumors. And then there was Musical.ly, which basically became TikTok from what I understand. But outside of that, you know, Instagram stories, people were being kind of mm-hmm. kind of cute with that, I guess. Um, Snapchat, of course, in between Vine That's right. and where we are now, definitely Snapchat exploded for sure. I'm I'm one the of those stories. guys that is that is so readily guilty about I did not go all in on Vine. But it came from like a, a <laughs> snobbiness. I was like, that's not filmmaking. Like I was just thinking about mm-hmm. this the other day. I was going for a walk and I meditate a lot and it's a lot of like demons that I'm trying to bury usually when I meditate and and um I was thinking, if I'm being super honest with myself, super real, um, even with myself, things that I don't even want to say out loud in my own head, you know, I remember the first big video I made on YouTube. This is embarrassing. I've never said this before, and only a few mm. few friends rem- remember this, but uh, I, I've never been a Dragon Ball Z anime fan. And in 2000, and yeah. gosh, it must have been seven or eight, whenever that movie came out, uh, they made an American adaptation of it, and it was god awful. And me and my friends made sort of like this parody review thing, put it on YouTube, and it, you hear this story all the time from like truly successful people that say, "We just were playing around, we put it out there." It was the first time I'd ever experienced something semi-viral. Like I had no subscribers. Uh, it may have been like on a friend channel actually, and uh, we would just refresh. I had like 50 views. What? We just uploaded this. Refresh. <laughs> now it had, back in the day, you might remember this, it would get stuck at like 303 reviews uh, or 303 mm. views. Yeah. And then it took like an hour to populate. And I think it peaked like at 50,000 views, which back in the day was like nuts. And if I'm being super honest, I felt guilty and ashamed that this video that was about a Dragon Ball Z movie review had my name and had my name on it and it looked like crap and it was so cringy and just me and my dumbass friends and uh, it wasn't polished by any means and it got so much views and there were people that subscribed to me that I still talk to to this day from that video. Wow. And I remember having this feeling, I must have been 20, maybe 21, and uh, I remember having this thought to myself of like, this is hack. This is not filmmaking. I don't want to be known for this. If I don't even want to be famous for this. And I, since mm-hmm. then, developed that, this complex of like, I'm not, I don't want to be a, I mean, YouTuber wasn't even a word, but I did not want to yeah, wow. be that. It didn't even, it, it, there was no career path. There was no, let's try that again. I didn't, I was, I just remember feeling like, Ooh, I did something bad. This isn't filmmaking. Mm-hmm. And I still have a little, a little bit of that sensation when I, when I post stuff in general, I've gotten a lot better at just not caring and just being, cause when you post stuff every day, you, you're not as romantic about it anymore. But I say that because I took that same guilt with me to vine. And I was like, this is not, I don't take this seriously. This is joke. Mm. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't look at this as a place to get attention, a place to build a brand. Like I, I did not. I was like, that's the last thing I want. But there were truly talented yeah. creators that were on Vine that were funny, people that built careers, but also it was a great place to to articulate yourself, you know. And mm-hmm. I and this is there's like a, an inherent cockiness to like, oh, I could pop on Vine. I just don't want to. And I'll, I'll admit to that. That's probably <laughs> unfounded. But here we are, 2020, now you and me, two old school guys <laughs> talking about TikTok. So I want to bring all my baggage in to say I'm not this sort of like a trend wave writer, like surfer. I don't – I'm a skeptic at best, always cautiously optimistic mm-hmm. about these new platforms that emerge because essentially movie making is becoming more and more – obsolete and like the dinosaurs from the past i'm still clutching on to what was at the same time Mm -hmm. letting go and accepting what what can be yeah and like thinking about vine i don't know if you've talked about this in other podcasts i know you and i have talked a lot about it but 
I have that you and I have that share some of the same in, like um, interest in filmmaking and like perspectives of filmmaking where I thought the same thing. I'm like, what is this? Why are these people? Be- this isn't even a funny joke. Yeah. But something clicked one night I was watching. I'm like, this is kind of amazing because it, it was limited to six seconds and it was also square. So they, they reduced everything I've known about filmmaking, which was widescreen cinematic story. But I'm like, well, there is still a story here. And then I was watching, I like to watch the old time um, comedies like Laurel and Hardy and the, the Rascals, Rascals gangs and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, like, you know, there's a lot of like silent jokes and stuff and they, but they tell very, almost like Mr. Bean would be a little bit more current where you just can see the thing unfold. And I was yeah. like, wait a second, they are telling a story in six seconds. This is actually amazing. And so for me, it sort of clicked where I thought it's different and there isn't a high resolution version that's available on Blu-ray, but it's never meant to be viewed on a giant TV. It was only meant to be viewed in your hand. Mm. And that's mm. how I perceived, or at least that's what got me like, Kind of going, all right, I'm going to make some videos for Vine because I got over that little hurdle. I, but in the back of my mind, I know exactly what you're saying because I know I text you random things sometimes, like cinematic, you know, because I see this stuff and I'm like, is this filmmaking? But that's all might be a whole different conversation because I know you've done a podcast about cin- cinema, what, what is um, yeah. um, cinematography and yeah. stuff like this with YouTube. But, um, you, you know, that's I- why though, like, like, I'll go, I'll go. No, no, well, I was just going to add to that with the Laurel and Hardy. Like Looney Tunes is that it 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 trans it transcends culture and language and if you watch old school Daffy Duck Bugs Bunny like it's these little sec- second films as well. Like it's they they're gifts. They were gifts before their time. Like they it it was it was meant for short attention spans by and large as opposed to to film, right? So just to add to that, like I grew mm-hmm. up that way. Um, with Bugs Bunny and stuff, and and I, I have to remind myself just how influential that that is on the culture as well. And people, you know, I I try to show my daughter Bugs Bunny and like the Looney Tunes, and it's too slow for her. She doesn't have the oh, attention wow. span yeah, for it. It's like it's like this magnum opus. It's too long for her now. <laughs> and I'll even admit, I've never even gone. I've never gone back to really watch it for that way but i noticed that if i am looking at an old video and it has like a, maybe a very iconic slow start to this thing i'll find myself kind of giving a double a double tap to see yep. the 15 seconds ahead yep. and i'm like what the heck so i know that i know yeah i'm buying and these a lot of these other um videos that are just everything's condensed and so even my brain has been morphed into a newer what i'd like to see you know get to the point sort of a mindset but just, it's probably a little bit to do with the fact that you know, in most cases you're in the bathroom or you're in line or you're just in places that's like, I'm not here to like enjoy this in long form. I just need to get to the, I want to like just enjoy this little moment of entertainment. That's exactly right. Right back to TikTok. <laughs> it, you know, just to stay on the, stay on that TikTok thing. It's funny how we've even been able to manage talking about it for 15 minutes. Um, hopefully people are still <laughs> bearing with us, but it's, it's definitely our conflict or struggle with TikTok definitely has something to do with our age because that's the thing about these 15s and I don't want to jump the gun in the conversation because I don't know where you're going to go with it but these these 15 year olds who it's just second language I mean we put how many years into understanding um mise-en-scene and composition and lighting and all this and like that doesn't matter Mm -hmm. anymore it's so I do feel like I have lost something and it's a strange thing when you're trying to make money commercially, at least from my perspective, like a part of me is like, no, we can just do it on a phone. But then it's like, no, maybe we should do it on a red. Like it's never been so yeah. extreme where you have the options and you could like now overproducing something is entirely possible. It depends what your result is, but it's a strange thing. Like I, I have this bug, but there's kids that don't. And so they're just able to go and create. And I, I do respect that at the end of the day. Yeah. And I know like, and that's where I was like, I have to dig in because there's this overlying, just being a little bit older, having gone through the, I would say through the, the vine era, just kind of the, the seeing it come and go and seeing the people that rose from it. And it was just like, there's just always, everyone's got opinions. Right. But I know in the back of my mind, there's a little jealousy because I'm seeing stuff that isn't super cinematic. There isn't even any knowledge probably of any um, sort of camera operation up, but the effects and the, like 
the manipulation of whatever it is within the app, even back in Vine and now with TikTok, I'm like, there's people doing stuff that I don't know how to, I don't even know how to do this. I don't even know, like, and it's just like the sequence of editing, just the mindset, sort of like I'm thinking back to, I'm trying to, <laughs> gosh, I'm trying to what memory, uh, old YouTubers, there's, a, there's an old YouTuber that I was like, I don't even think the way this guy's editing. And I think I, I've done a reaction video to some of the newer stuff. But when I see stuff like that, that's the stuff that usually helps me get away from my judgment of like old school, like this isn't real filmmaking. Yeah. And I'm just like, wait a second, how are they do, doing this with their phone with zero knowledge of, you know, lighting and all this stuff? And they're still doing all these cool effects. So that's the stuff that always catches my eye. And especially with this where I'm like, like, all right, I should be able to figure this out. I can reverse engineer how they're making these text bubbles pop up. And then if I end up on YouTube looking at tutorials this morning, I was like, I got to figure out how these people are doing this. <laughs> Dave, Nob, on a Friday morning, on a Friday morning, YouTubing TikTok <laughs> tutorials, I never thought I'd see the day. Well, and because I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to make a video on it. Cause the apps change so quickly. I know I had a whole long in-depth uh, uh, app review uh, education for Vine that never got made because they changed the Vine app almost within that month. Mm. But that's what I was going to say when you were talking about, there is this perceived thing. Like it, it sweeps through. It's like, Oh yeah. TikTok. You know, usually if you have younger people in your life, they're all already on it. And you, I just, for me personally, I'm like, I'm so tired of hearing TikTok. Why couldn't it have been a, a smoother name? TikTok. You know, like Vine just was like, all right, it's cool. Yeah. But, um, now, but because just like the app is, you know, everything's condensed, shorter, shorter attention, short, things are also changing within it where the community, because I downloaded the app a long time ago. I think I even downloaded it when it was musically. And I'm like, same, it's not, this is weird. As soon as I open the app, you get forced into the follow or the for you page. Yeah. And it's just a bunch of girls dancing. And I'm like, what? They're not even dancing. They're just swinging their arms around. And I'm like, okay, this is weird and awkward. I'm like an older dude. I, this isn't where I need, I don't need this forced at me. Like yeah. this is just for kids. This is not for me. But in the last few months, because of all the hype and everything, it's actually different than it was when I used it two months ago, even. Wow. It is crazy. That's why I, I, I texted you this morning. I'm like, you know, I, once I found a little community, just like last night and yesterday, I'm like, oh, this is actually so much more fun <laughs> that Man. when I jump onto Instagram, yeah. I'm like, oh, this is so boring and slow. Has that I haven't happened watched already? Stories. I haven't watched stories in four days. Has that happened sorry, already? That? That's happened. So TikTok is uh, more entertaining, interesting, lively than Instagram. That that's happened. It could be that for this is for me. So it could be like the new girlfriend situation where it's like all yeah. fresh and new. So I'm like, but yeah. it's it's not in your. It's sort of like you pick and choose what what you want to watch once you get into the hashtags and you start to find a little community. Yeah. The algorithm, from what I've experienced so far, the algorithm on TikTok that that tells you like the for you page. Yeah. They they've they've gotten it to the point I think better than any other app that's ever existed just up till now. Holy like, smokes! Because I think about you remember when you log into Vine, and this is why Logan Paul and all these guys got so huge. You get forced these same people. Yeah. And it was like, oh, there's King Bach and all these other guys, and it's like. I, where's the fresh stuff that I'm into? And just from, cause it gives you the option. You push on it. It says decline or show less of this kind of a thing. And the, it pushes out stuff. And I don't know, I can dig into the algorithm, but I'm just like, I found like about 10 different people that I'm like, these, these are kind of fun closer to my age. So it's not a bunch of super hoochie mama dance and stuff. that just makes me feel awkward, you know, for sure. But anyways, yeah. That's my little, that's my little overview of it, but I, it's a, it, I, I don't even know how to explain it. I'm like, it's a game changer, but it's going to change so quickly that it could be out just as quickly because yes. this is what I was thinking. So last night, I guess I'll admit it here. I was like, I gotta go to sleep. It's 11 o'clock, five 30 this morning. I went to sleep after this. I was on there from like 1130 to five 30. Holy on smokes app. on TikTok, And I would, but I was uploading, I was seeing something like, oh, that's pretty funny. I'm going to, I wonder if I could try that. And I was testing, this is me uh, testing the effects. Cause there's a lot of weird learning curve. Cause they don't label any of the effects. You have to see a video with the effect 
and then copy it into your oh, favorite whatever I'll make a video. Well, on. that answers that. It's funny. I was gonna. But yeah, it's, I was gonna ask you yesterday. Hey, do you know how to such and such do this effect? Because I feel so dumb. I can't find it. It's not like Snapchat where it, it populates. And uh, but I was like, don't bother Dave Knopp with that. But little did I know that you were going <laughs> down the the rabbit hole. Yeah, and for anyone listening, and for you, the quick a preview that I learned is you find a video that has it, and usually it's labeled with a little like magic yeah. dust star, and you click that, it takes you to the like almost like a trending page of just that effect, and you can add that effect to your favorites, and then mm. it's in your bin of favorites, and you don't have to worry about trying to track mm. it down again. I like but, that. So that was something I was learning. But here's the biggest thing. So last night I was going through and I was watching tons of stuff. But it was a different sort of binging because I was trying to basically I was trying to hone it into a group that I enjoy watching. So I'm just it's I just can't get into the arm shifting like dance moves where it's just like, yeah, uh, it, 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 I just get over it. <laughs> but I found there's a whole community of people that actually have some original fun stuff out there. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is. And it's different because this, and I saw actually people sharing this in the app itself. They're making videos going, did you ever notice that when you're on TikTok for a while, you go over to Instagram or YouTube and it feels like blah or meh. And I know that's probably the new, the new person mentality. Like it's just new. It's a new app. The honeymoon phase. It's the one girl she mentioned it. It's the shareability. Cause if I see a video, I like, I click on it. Now, if they open it up to the public, it gives me an option to favorite it share it or download it instantly to my phone, which hmm. as just being older, sometimes I don't want to send every one of my friends to TikTok with a link. I just want to send them the funny video I saw and it burns in their logo for That's them. Right. So they, as right. soon as you download it, they're covered. And I'm like, no other app does this. Like it's, you it's can't nice download thing. anything. You, you link on Instagram to Twitter. It doesn't work. Yeah. Has, you know, you link on Twitter to Instagram. It doesn't preview. And it's That's like right. everybody's fighting where yeah. TikTok's like, no, go, go for it. Share it everywhere. We don't care. And <laughs> what's interesting, oh, and, and, and I, maybe you're just about to say this. Sorry for interrupting. Right. But uh, yeah, I'll write it down. With, but with, <laughs> please do. With the branding where it shows your, your tag, it is an advertisement and promotion for the brand. It promotes mm-hmm. itself. So even if you take this and cross pollinate it on Facebook or wherever, it's still a TikTok video. That's why they can get away with that. And I'll admit, like, there's some frustration because I'm like, I personally think Vine, right before it ended, if you updated it uh, to the latest version of the app, it had the most amazing, no one ever talks about this, it, Vine app had the most amazing looping functionality. You could bring in a song and it figured out how to perfectly loop it mm. for the delay and everything. And it would be seamless. No other app's ever been able to duplicate this since. And, um, I, that it's frustrating because you get into TikTok and the music is what is what's making this the most popular app right now, because you hear really popular songs you love to listen to and you get to see people that you like dance along or make jokes with that music. And they're not getting hit with copyright strikes. And I'm like, why That's couldn't right. the other company just figure out how to do this right? You know, you get flagged sometimes if you upload to Instagram with music and stuff. And TikTok, man, they're, they must have got some unlimited cash because they got that covered. But I know as I'm ranting on and on about this, I know I kind of love backtrack that. a little. And <laughs> I want to say, obviously, this is from a perspective of I'm a filmmaker, but I also enjoy the idea of entertainment and different ways to entertain. Mm. And that's through storytelling, through a movie in long form. And there's definitely the searchability is like not even close. Like I go to YouTube if I want to try to track down a TikTok that I thought was funny. I saw a couple of days ago, you know, I can't, there's no way to really find it within the app right now other than just trying to search hashtag, but usually it's just people because right now there's no way to edit. It's weird. I had a dream about you last night that you texted me to edit one of my hashtags. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> That's when wow. you spend six hours on the app. Yeah, but I woke up and I was like, "You can't edit once you post." Of all the awesome open like source sortedness that they did with TikTok, they they don't let you go in and re-edit your tags. Yeah, so that kind of sucks. Oh, that's the question you I was going to ask of, you: is can you edit your thumbnail after you post the video? Can't edit anything. You have to basically just delete it. And when you delete it, if you try to re-upload it, if you recorded the video within the app, it's already got burned in the little TikTok. Of course. Thing, no, no, no. So. But like, so if, if it's cause I just made a video, it, it did really well for me. 
I got some followers out of it and all that. I, I enjoyed the video, but the thumbnail is not as engaging as it should be. The thumbnail, you know, like when you go on my oh, page. you want to change it. And it's like, how do you change that? And I, I don't know if you can. I think it's the first frame. Well, here's the thing. And, and that's because, yeah, that's that learning curve because you get in there. I did the same thing where I'm like, oh, you have to tap underneath at the select cover and do it at this time in the but editing once, process. Once you post it, you can't change it. Apparently the cover. No, it's burned in. That's the, but thing here's that what sucks. I, I should have known that right. But my video would have had 5,000 views or 10 if I had posted the right frame. I personally think I disagree. And only because I think they're doing something different where they're really honing in on either, um, the music that you use, if you're using a track from their library, yeah. if you have words that you're saying, they're doing scans of that and the hashtags. I think they're using all of those Yeah, because I there's actually a guy right now, he's doing a test where he's, I don't know how many cuss words he's going to go through, but he's doing a test where he just says the cuss word over and over again. And he's yeah. doing different curse words to see which ones get flagged just yeah. verbally. He's that's of the course. only thing he's doing. Yeah. He's test hacking, but that'll all change. But, um, so kind of backtracking with that idea of my perspective of it, this is where it's coming from. Like, okay, it's the entertainment thing. There's always this idea of, oh, but it's not TV. But it's like, yeah, TV's not even TV anymore. What is TV? You know, like you think about, you sit and watch 30 minutes of commercials. Like, would, could you sit through a 20 minute half hour, a, half, a show that's a half hour long, but it's only 20 minutes with commercials? When I, that I still do that, and when I do, I mute the commercials. Mm -hmm. Not just because they make them louder on a decibel level, but yeah. not just that. Like, you know, I'll watch. I pay for this one app called Sling for my Roku, okay. and, and, it, and it creates this um, live television sort of thing where I have, like, 40 channels or something. And I pay, like, something like 40 bucks a month for this damn subscription and i only watch one channel and i only watch it for this one program that i don't even that i miss all the time but it has a dvr function <laughs> and this wrestling program when they cut to commercial on the tnt network they now have two screens there's a screen to the right that shows the live broadcast so you can see the arena the wrestlers the match is still going on and then it, on the left is the ad so you kind of don't want to mm -hmm. mute it. Or if you do mute it, you know what I mean? So now television's trying to evolve Smart. as well. So, but it's, I only watch one program and I miss it all the time. Like I've probably oh, seen gosh. three yeah. out of the last 12 episodes live. It's difficult for me because it's a, it's appointment television now, right? Or you watch it on your own time. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, just to, just to answer your question. Yeah. It's rare though. It's yeah, still, I, it's still passive on the background. Uh, for New Year's, I had a couple friends over, and I just had Spotify on my television as, like, the radio, essentially. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so it's more passive. But, and I just wanted to kind of backtrack to that just to kind of do the perspective, because I know at this point, I don't know, I guess we've talked for, like, 30 minutes about this. I'm not trying to say everyone needs to get in this app. This is coming from the perspective of I enjoy entertaining, so I want to look at areas to entertain. I always had this argument. Mm. <laughs> I shouldn't say I always had it. I've, I've had it for the last few years, which is I'm a you like you're just why do you like to be a YouTuber? And it's like, I'm not a YouTuber. I put this material on YouTube because it's the most adequate platform for long form videos of educational or, you know, tutorials. That's right. But and that's probably just me just being kind of nerdy about it. But I'm like, no, I'm not a YouTuber. What is that? That's like and that's where I know there's this just natural thing. People go on. Oh, hey, I'm a TikToker. I'm hey TikTok. What's happening? And it's like, mm -hmm. maybe that's me just being older. I'm like, yeah, this could, video could be anywhere. So it kind of seems weird if you say, Hey, TikTok and you upload it to Instagram. It's like, why not just say, Hey, you watching this right now, how are you doing? Right. But, um, that's why it's, it's a platform, but here's what I wrote down what I was thinking. So last night I binged six plus hours, right? Yes. I saw, zero ads not a single ad really not, not yet this is on yeah that's why i'm saying so if there's ever if, as far if you're into not being an entertainer but if, if you're just into consuming entertainment yes. jump on this app now because you will have and you will have over six hours of uninterrupted mm -hmm. entertainment mm -hmm. now it might take some time to hone it into what you might like but that alone 
it's on, it's on both sides. I'm, I'm pro entertainer and the consumer as well. Cause I'm like, that was the most enjoyable experience because you well yeah, you experience it. You get on Facebook, you watch a video and there's that little yellow dot in the timeline. You're like, here it comes, here it comes. I know. Commercial. I hate it. And it's like, what? And I know that's going to be coming this way, but not even that there was, I didn't come across a single brand endorsement that I could identify. So yeah. the influencers within the app, yeah. they're just dancing, doing their little arm jigs. Yeah. And they're not like, maybe they're wearing stuff that's sponsored. I don't know. Yeah. You know, cause that's that like younger kids are like into fashion. So they might recognize shoes and stuff, but I'm like, I don't have people going, Hey guys, check out this cool thing. These are the best mm-hmm. earbuds in town. It's like, right. no, I just, it's just fun little relic, relic, um, relatable things. Okay. So you've, you've, you've opened up a big can of worms and I'd love to get into it. So we're at the 30 minute mark. We're still talking about TikTok, okay. everybody. And I love it. So you've said a couple of things that have sort of triggered me. I was asked on friend of the show, Brian Kern's podcast. He's, he has a podcast called the common chaos podcast. Uh, go check it out. It's mm-hmm. awesome. He's celebrating his, I think five or six year anniversary right now. Needless to say on his show, he asked me, um, if I view myself as an entertainer and I cringed at that, I was like, nah, I, I don't make, and this is pretentious. I know, but I don't make work that is meant to be, um, you can escape watching my stuff, but it's not for me, my intent, once it's out there, people do whatever they want with it. But my intent is not to have you escape your reality it's really more about messaging. It's, it's more propaganda, if I'm being honest, than it is entertainment. I'm not there to shuck and jive and make you laugh. And I don't look at myself as a performer. I am mm-hmm. the face of my messaging because ain't nobody else going to do it. It's cheaper, more practical that way. And so I was just saying this last night. I was uh, doing a meeting. I was having a meeting, rather. And somebody wanted me and she might hear this uh to potentially <laughs> do um a show with her as I'm kind of like a sidekick sort of thing and it's like wow people just assume I'm very comfortable with being an on-screen personality <laughs> I don't see it that way but reality wow. is percept or perception is reality so it almost doesn't matter what I feel like if that's what people believe it's what it is So, you know, I wanted to tell her, like, I'm a behind the scenes director guy, but I've just had to do it. I just had to be this front facing person um, because nobody else will do it uh, for me, you know. And so the entertaining Um, aspect, this is still it's almost like a dirty word for me where it brings me back to my hangups from the past of, man, is TikTok the place for entertainment, it sounds like it is. Um, not everybody is an entertainer. And and there's a great dichotomy here because what I like about TikTok today, it's TikTok today, January 10th. This will change by summer. We know this. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, there are, what I like about it right now is there are people that this is not for them they can't do this, and so they're out. I love that. I think mm-hmm. people are still clinging on to Snapchat because my mom is not going to go on Snapchat. This ain't for her. This ain't your granny's social network, the way Facebook is, mm-hmm. or even arguably Twitter. Um, and TikTok has that going for it. I love when people are like, oh, that's, that's not for me. I'm like, great. This is kind of like the club, the cool club, um, that, you know, corny ass people ain't going to go in and that's cool. It has that going for it. That's white hot right now. What's scary. And we'll, you know, write this down because it's worth talking about today. Instagram can release a feature that, that mimics TikTok, just like, just like they chopped the legs off of Snapchat. That's what they do. And it's dispassionate. They can do it, and, you know, the difference is they don't have that cool factor. And like you said, it's so crowded with the uh, advertisements and everything. But, you know, this is the first time I've ever mentioned Peter McKinnon on the podcast. This is a guy that created a TikTok, and from the last I checked, maybe hasn't made anything. Because that's not his regimen. 
his style, his aesthetic is not silly. It's not performer, you know, he's not a performer per se. He's a great on-screen personality, but his he may be able to find a niche in, in so far as landscape photography and gear mm-hmm. uh, porn, for lack of a better word, you know, the fetization of, of tech or whatever. But the truth is, is he going to be making these fun sort of, you know, videos? I, I don't think so. And I like the silliness right now. It's, it's fun. Like, mm-hmm. that's not for everybody. The alienation part, you know, I'm not an entertainer per se, but can I find a way to be myself on this? Yeah, I think so. And now's the time if you really want to, if you really want to, what happens if you have three or five or 10 back to back million viewed videos and you have a million followers on a platform? (laughs) What happens? I don't know. I can tell you 12 years ago, it scared the shit out of me. Not that that ever happened, but on YouTube, I was like, I don't know if I want to be that guy today. I don't think it hurts. I don't, I think now I know what to do with it, but, um, I know I opened up a big can of worms there and talked about all kinds of things, (laughs) but, um, the, the entertainment aspect of it, like I don't actively search for entertainment. I immediately feel guilty when I do. Um, I saw like maybe three or four back-to-back funny videos of this YouTuber. I think his name is like Gus Johnson that I just found on my recommended. Oh, yeah. And he's really funny and his videos are short and he, they're very thoughtful and clever and you can tell there's thought put to, put in put into them. Um, but after watching three or four of his videos that are ostensibly sketches, comedy sketches, I felt guilty. I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Like I'm <laughs> now I'm here. I am like. You know, watching, uh, it's like reading a Cosmopolitan magazine, you know, uh, at home. Like, what am I, I'm escaping. And I immediately call myself on it and I feel bad. So TikTok is really just like a a complete party 24-7. And it's like, hmm, I got to find, and it takes, you can't spend years, but you got to find like your style and your way of contributing to something and connecting with people for sure. It doesn't, that doesn't mean that I need to start doing the arm flailing around dance by any means. But, uh, (laughs) I, you got the wheels turning in my head of like, well, what could I do here? What could I do? Like right now, you know, I'm putting filmmaking where it belongs, which is like on my third tier. I, I still do Mm -hmm. it. Obviously I do it professionally, but like for me, I've taken like the energy that I've used for daily vlogs and putting it into a daily podcast and I still capture the video. Is there a way to do something new and fun and cool on TikTok this way? Is there? Hmm. Like it's worth, it's worth trying to figure out what's changed is when you and I growing up, like filmmaking was the only, and television was the only game in town. And so the tools were expensive Mm -hmm. and there was, once you had the tools, you Everybody had to do the same thing with them. That has changed. How we communicate has changed. How we consume has changed. The tools have changed. You and me had this reverence and respect, and maybe even, you know, uh, we romanticized it too much to an extent. The the craft of filmmaking, of Mm -hmm. mise-en-scene, of cutting from here to there to here to there. And now kids... It's just their language. It's just how they think and speak. It's we've. It's their sixth sense, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, and so, with these tools, as a filmmaker, I need to adapt and say, "Well, how do I? How do I play? How do I play music here?" You know, I have this background. I know how to read sheet music. I'm that guy. But how do I jam with these in this crowd now? How do I stand apart? That's when you're younger, you just do it. You don't even question right. it. You just go. Just go off through your, your board or whatever, and you just do it. <laughs> um, I want to get back in that zone of just doing it, not even being in my head and theorizing and, and just doing it. Do you see yourself like you and me have talked off mic about, man, you're, you, you, Dave, if I can say you're a perfectionist when it comes to YouTube. Like, you know that this work is going to exist forever. You know that when people Google your name, this is what they're going to find. 
And so a lot of thought goes into it. Even if you upload a two minute video, I'm like, I don't want to work that hard when I watch this. I'm like, I don't, it's too much. Like the, like these little sounds that go from like one title card to another. I'm like, damn. Yeah. I forgot. You can do that. (laughs) That's work, man. Um, but do you, do you see yourself thinking, I don't know if you think in terms when it comes to your, your creativity, I don't know if you think in terms of projects or if you think in terms of like scratching an itch, but like, is your brain thinking in the TikTok language and where do you see yourself going with that platform? Like what is, what, what, what do you want to do? I mean, obviously as a consumer, there's that. And so you develop the language, but once you have it, what are you going to do with that? Yeah. Okay. That's a good question because like I mentioned, I downloaded this app so long ago and I opened it and I'm like, this is weird. I, I don't, it's just people dancing, generalized it, shut it down. Open it a few months later because I have nephews and nieces. They're constantly talking about it. So I'm like, oh, let's see what's going on. Still didn't get it. And something clicked. And sure enough, it was because of trending and just things that I'm into. Gary Vaynerchuk is obviously all over the app. And I started watching and he was just having his little sound clips that he has there. And about this thing of like, people are crazy for not uploading. I'm like, oh, this again, this whole thing of <laughs> someone telling me what to do. But look, I'll list he was on that got me to go back and think of it with a different perspective of sort of what we should do with everything, which is shut down the generalizations. Think about what you are looking for or trying to do. Like it's that start with why mentality. I'm in cynic. You start with why, but like it goes into this and that's where I'm like, Oh, the benefit is I'm older. I've already experienced the early days of YouTube or the early days of vine or trying to understand Snapchat, which I never really got a grasp on, but I'm like, wow, we have a benefit over these young people that seem to be thriving on this stuff. And mm-hmm. it's like, it, it, this isn't just for them it's because they're, I mean, I, and I've come across tons of videos on TikTok where they're like, oh man, I hope I get famous from this. And it's like, that's something I wanted to touch on where I think the new idea of fame, it's going to be so short lived. I think it's, you're going to get three seconds of fame instead of what is it? Six seconds of fame or something. I don't know what the old seconds, slang was. Yeah. Your six seconds, six minutes, whatever. Anyways, um, this, there is an element of this is a brand new app. I'm like all pumped up to talk about it. And a month from now, you might, I might not ever log into it again. I'm totally aware of that only from experiences I've had before with apps where it's the new, it's the new soda pop, you know, like it's just something new. So it's caught my attention, but the benefits of that, in my opinion, are it's sort of like hanging out with a new group of friends. And it's like, the good part is I'm a little bit more mature. So I'm not as influential as I used to be where even in the early days being older, I would watch Vine and I would, you know, the big time Vine guys and stuff like those comedy people, I would end up trying to kind of my mind thinking, oh, I wonder if I could emulate that joke yeah. in my own way. And I'm like, wait, I don't want to copy these. Who are these people? And so I was getting caught up with uh, influence. But that's where I don't know what I don't, like to I guess your original question. I'm thinking I'm totally aware that this app could we're talking about and everything. And it could be just like old news, irrelevant stuff for me, at least just because of maybe I get really busy with other things. But I think the reason I, I, it's different is because it's completely changed the game. And one major thing is like, for, for whatever reason, this app has a lot of, Hey mom, Hey dad, if, if I, how many likes will it take for you to stop smoking? Ooh. It's a lot of stuff like that. Like, or like a parent will be still talking to their son. Hey, how many likes does this video have to get for you to stop smoking jewels? You know, and there's a lot of those types of videos that are sort of like, kind of like encouraging. And you know what? I'm like, Oh yeah, I'll totally throw down a double tap on that. Give them a heart because it's awesome. Cause the person will be like, I don't know, a hundred thousand. And you look and it has like 3 million likes and it's like, Oh, we did it. <laughs> and wow. who knows if this person ever actually quit, but I'm like, well, this is sort of like this, it's going to start a new culture of like, and I would say encouraging people to do things better, like to improve themselves. And it's sort of like that. It's a, I'm all over the place, but it's like a different, it's a different perspective of how to use an audience. Cause there's always going to be those people that are like, they go home at night and they keep logging in to look how many likes they have. Yeah. But if you're going into the app and you're already over that, like you don't need it. That's why I was thinking of you this morning. When I woke up because last night I was thinking I followed, started following the psychology guy. He just randomly tells about 30 seconds of psychological facts from his studies. 
And I'm like, this is amazing. He's not being goofy. He'll maybe put in a face effect on, Mm -hmm. but he's just like, did you know that when you have an emotion, you actually experience the emotion before the actual thing happens? And he gives like this Latin term of what all this is. And I'm like, whoa, this is amazing. I would have never looked this up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I would have never found it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And here I am. And it's favorited in my favorites category. And I downloaded it to my phone so I could share it to my friends all within like uh, less than a minute. Hmm. And maybe he'll blow up and be famous, but I'm not good. If I see him on the street, I'm not going to probably run up to him the same way I would Tom Cruise or one of these Hollywood celebrities. So it's like a different sort of thing. I don't know. I'm, I've jumped all over the place, but it's because I'm excited because it actually does offer so much for everyone. But it, like anything that you're going to get into, if you're going to like put yourself out there, you have to know why you're getting into it because you could chase the likes, but I don't really see. I was thinking because there's like some people that are super famous. They have like 16 million followers. And I'm just like, that'll definitely be useful for like marketing somewhere. But I don't really see how that fame, it it really comes back down to you better actually be good at what you're trying to do. Yes. If you're trying to be a dancer, you better be a good dancer because eventually someone's going to say, hey, could you do it in long form? Give us three minutes of this. Mm. He's up there swinging your arm around, you know, but uh, anyways, that, that's where I, I was frustrated. I'm like, man, I want to, I was thinking of you especially because I'm like, if I could get, then I know Gary Vaynerchuk, like Gary V, he puts stuff out there. His crew, his team puts all that out. He doesn't even really know what's going out. So I know for people like you or me, we have to manually do it ourselves. Of course. And it's kind of time consuming. If you're trying to find a 13 second clip out of a two hour podcast or in our yes. case, an hour long podcast about yes. TikTok, but yeah. like, <laughs> I would totally, I mean, if it was me, and I know I'm friends with you, but I'm thinking of your, your old posts on Facebook yeah. and all this, like if I could get those snippets and I could just be scrolling one after another within TikTok, and then in between I get a little commercial break, but it's not a commercial. It's just one of my buddies doing a stupid dance or playing a joke on his parents. Then I'm like, all right, that's my commercial break. Enjoy my, the commercial breaks currently are just watching other friends do funny things. Then you're back to, whatever you're anyways you're into. So I don't, I totally am on board with Gary V's perspective. It's absolutely insane for people that are into sharing information or entertaining people not to be on the app. Even if they're uploading their, their crap off their phone that they shot three years ago, which is what I was experimenting with. I'm uploading old vines. I saw that. And I'm like, cause these are cool and vines dead. And I'm like, right. I want this video to live on. So yes, I started sharing that. Just, and that's me just experimenting with what works and stuff. But then that's where there's, there's entertainers and there's tons of educators on there. Like there's people that are just sharing TikTok tips. <laughs> so it's so corny. What am I talking about? Well, well hold on there. Like, hold on there. Well, go, I'm sorry. Go, fin- go ahead. Finish that. I want to know. Oh, he just said simply because I was on there and I'm like, I'll have like you mentioned. I was like, whoa, this has 1,200 views. And that just means it plays through 1,200 times. I'm like, that's amazing. I uploaded that three days ago. I don't get that kind of retention or... Um, anything on Instagram or anywhere. And then the very next upload, and these are like two videos I uploaded within minutes of each other. The other one has two views. I'm like, what is going on? And that's where hashtags, there's like the shadow banning. If you have certain hashtags that just aren't um, relevant or something that they don't want to promote, they, they put it down, but right. right So guy guy got on there. He's like, stop deleting. He wasn't talking to me directly, but he's like, you guys stop deleting your TikTok that have low views. So the algorithm's waiting to push this out at a different time mm. to a different audience because they know what this kind of content is good for. And it's for people that are up at two in the morning looking at these kind of videos, like mm. that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if that's the case, and this is just some random duty that worked for TikTok, but I'm like, oh, he might be right. Because if that's the case, he had a name for it. It was called delayed delayed virality or something like this, where Ooh. it gets pushed out and gets tons of views. Which, if that's the case, that's something else that no other app has. Because I would never, like, unless I'm really into you and kind of almost obsessed, I would rarely go into someone's profile and scroll way down and watch all of their old videos on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go through and watch everyone. Oh, that's a picture. Let me swipe all of them. I'm just going to watch whatever you have from that point on after following you. Where That's right. Currently, with TikTok, what I've experienced, they don't post dates on the videos you're watching. And a lot of times I'll like a video, go in to find it again, because it'll say, check out my next video to see this, how this works out. And I'm like scrolling 
almost three or four months down into their profile feed to find the actual video I just watched on my For You page. I'm like, this is crazy. This is like cutting edge. Mm -hmm. Just knowing that there's so much content, for once, this app actually opens the opportunity of saying, no, you actually might see somebody's old video they uploaded a year ago. On mm -hmm. YouTube, it's very rare you're going to get recommended a video you uploaded three years ago. So because I, there's, I'm glad you brought YouTube up because I – you're probably thinking, well, we're almost approaching an hour. Like, how, how much longer could we talk about Crap. TikTok? Well, I mean, <laughs> just for my listeners, if they've made it this far, please let, let me and Dave Knopp know that you made it 50 minutes in at the very least. But I think it's just it just goes to show <laughs> how, how surprising and delightful this app is right now. But you brought up YouTube, and I want to contrast it to YouTube because mm -hmm. this is going to sound defeatist. And you know what? Ain't nothing wrong with throwing in the towel. I mean, I know we live in a very, like, never give up, never surrender kind of America sort of culture, but um, <laughs> especially if you're a man. Um, but I'm thinking about throwing in the towel for YouTube, like, as far as trying to scale and grow, simply because I missed the ship. I missed the ship. I missed it. I missed the boat. It's just what it is. Anybody can pop off, and that's great. But there's such a overproduction side of YouTube, if you really want to make it, you have to overproduce your content. You have to overthink it. YouTube has curated to the creator, you know, your thumbnail, your headline, the copy, the words you say, uh, all that. It's very thoughtful. It's Google. So it's very, the algorithm is almost psychic at that point. And that's all good. And I like YouTube as an archive and it's great for SEO and it's great when people Google your name and they find the thing and all that. I like it for that. I look at it like the shelf where my stuff goes to die. Um, whereas TikTok right now, everything that you're saying reminds me of like when, when, when YouTube was emerging from the cocoon for the first time. And if you slow down the, the, um, the, the emerging it's 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 uh it's amazing and and it sounds like we're in a golden age for that and everything that you're saying not as a sourpuss i just want to say yeah it, that's awesome for now yeah no 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 i like that too today you know because here's the thing mm -hmm. it it you know it, instagram is going to steal this it's going to steal it they may not steal the audience and like the youth that's there and the I don't think you can steal like what's cool per se and people are pretty smart they'll know ah eh, that's whack. Um, I think I think we can mm -hmm. agree that that f that Instagram slash Facebook's um, um, filters their 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 facial filters aren't as cool or as engaging as yeah. Snapchat. Snapchat still has that going for it, anyways. But there's these cool things that are happening on TikTok. The sort of organic um sneaky virality of something just like hey let it grow and let the algorithm do its thing being able to to use the music being able to uh, you know if you're a musician what if your song goes viral like that's what i'd be thinking of if i was a musician today there's all these great hacks for lack of a better word to grow there's room for growth um it may not last forever and so this is a this is a a brilliant time to get in would you agree like youtube for me 100 it's a shame because i respect youtubers but that's a very mature platform you know like it's casey neistat was able to become a not a household name maybe he is but like be able to i mean he's contributed to cinema like he essentially popularized <laughs> a brand new wave of filmmaking the likes of which have never been seen since the the French New Wave in the '60s. That's amazing. Yeah. That's cutting edge, and I respect all that for it. But there's such a a whoremongering on YouTube of buy my shit, subscribe, smash that like button. There's so much of that. You know, I usually just use YouTube to either be inspired or to search for how to do something. Um, TikTok is now the place to to express yourself and we always need that. Instagram became as it matured. I was an early adopter of Instagram before it was bought by Facebook and um it was just the place for uh, ostensibly 
Um, Instagram was a place for photo filters that were meant to make your photos look film-like. And that's what yeah. I used it for. Uh, someone who's been on my show, Cody Weber, was the first person I saw on it during the Tumblr days. Man, we're all over the place. And oh, I adopted yeah. it as well. <laughs> Um, back when there was like 20 apps on the app store, joking, but not joking. Instagrams became a whoremongering place too. Like you said, the, um, the influencer culture is overbearing. There's ads every third or fourth post. Um, I can't see all the stories that I want because the five people that are at the top of the window, I don't care. I just don't care. Um, by and large, like celebrity wise, it, it became very celebrity infiltrated. There was a while where celebrities were too cool for it. And then Ellen DeGeneres took a selfie with Bradley Cooper and Angela Jolie. And then everybody got on Instagram. It's fine. That's what happens. That's right. about Facebook that. is just a place for in Hispanic culture. We call it cheese, man. That's like the Tex-Mex of just like <laughs> gossip. It's just for, um, you know, propaganda you know, and but it's still very salesy. Like I have people that I graduated with on high school that got into pyramid schemes that are like tagging me on things. It's like you're embarrassing me. Um, yeah. Snapchat is a, it's still like my place for anonymity. Like you know, nobody at my workplace is gonna follow me on Snapchat and stalk me, or you know, it's very like. My sister's on there. That's where we talk. My brother's on there. That's where we talk. My cousins, like, it's, it's that place. Dave, Dave Knopp, you know, I still watch his stories when he posts. But here comes mm -hmm. TikTok, like, this new, vibrant, emerging, evolving expression platform that is solely based on creatives that are confident enough to, be, to turn the camera in on themselves. This is a big distinction. I don't see that on Facebook often. I don't see that. I feel yeah. like Facebook has curbed the, the live feature. Like it doesn't have the same umph that it did when it debuted. Um, but ne and videos for that matter, you know, just normal videos. But um, TikTok right now, there's a lot of eyeballs on it. And what you and I have that we've already put in the decade or you couple decades no offense <laughs> um that's a good uh, that's a that's meant to be a compliment but uh <laughs> you know you've been you've been playing with videos for at least 20 years at this point and you can bring that experience and and really do new things and scratch an itch and get the high get the high that we haven't been able to well that i haven't been able to feel in a very long time and meet new people and gain new followers and gain new contacts that are outside your network in your bubble that you would have never met on the other hand. Facebook, usually it's people you kind of know, or maybe you met or mm -hmm. a friend of a friend of a friend. But TikTok has this sort of, you never know who's going to see your thing. Somebody from the other side of the planet could see it. I knew there was something great going on with TikTok when I saw a headline just a week ago that, that the army banned it from their service members. The army will not, you can't be on TikTok if you're in the army. There was a few TikToks I saw where people were on military bases in, in Korea and they're saying, you know, here I am stuck in Afghanistan and uh, I was just about to be out and here I am doing nothing. That, I could never find that on Instagram organically. That wasn't going to happen or Facebook. So there's this new sort of like discovery process, which is um, just delightful and uh, it's certainly missed, man. Can you can you contrast with your experience? Because, I mean, <laughs> you've had you've had viral videos on YouTube and Instagram. Um, Lad Bible picked up your video on Facebook, and didn't it get like hundreds of thousands, if not a million views, or something wild like that? Can you contrast TikTok right now, the golden age, whatever it is, right now today? to these mature, I don't want to say dying, but just to these mature and, and if I could be biased for a second, just not so much fun anymore platforms. Like, you know, how long do you see this lasting and, and how yeah. is it different and how can, how can we maximize this as creators? Yeah. I'm trying to think of, I'm going to get the microwave version here because you said some things that just sparked some um, other ideas, but I, in contrast, I think it's that constant perspective of 
everything's constantly changing. The community sort of dictates how things are used. You know, that's where TikTok, like you said, Instagram was originally this thing. They were trying to compete and then people, people were using it, stuff like that. They kind of morphed into that. Looking at it, it, and this is some of it's just like, I'm a little bit older. So I'm just like, who cares? It's something that goes away tomorrow. I really don't. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm not that invested in TikTok. If I, someone deleted the app off my phone, I never opened it again. I'd be bummed, but I'm like, eh, I got Instagram to fall back on. So there's these things, I think it's just as the majority of the culture, or at least the community that I'm involved with, as they mature, I noticed that a lot of my friends, they are getting older, they've gotten married, they, they start having kids. And so they're posting less. They're actually not really posting anything entertaining. Now they're just kind of like, the only time I can make videos is when it's going to be like a very important A topic. birthday party or something. Right. And so that, I think that general shift is always going to happen in like my, I would say my immediate group that I'm following. And so I look at TikTok and I'm like, this is so cool. I found a group of people that are close to my age, a little bit older, but they're posting things that, you know, their parents and stuff. So they're doing stuff that their kids are like, stop it, mom, this is corny. But they're just like, who cares? I, I want to have fun. I used to have fun before you guys came along, you know, like that's the mindset I'm seeing. But, and this isn't like totally like tunnel vision. I know that there's tons of, I would say haters out there and just people that are just out to just make fun. It seemed like, and this is, I don't know what it is. The difference that I noticed in contrast is we've learned, it's almost like I relate everything to relationships. We learned after our relationship with Facebook or go back way back, we go, okay, I, I remember, I remember my space, our top eight, that was the big deal. You know, the top eight, <laughs> I learned from that relationship. Yeah. Facebook, that was that really hot girl that wouldn't go out with anyone. Suddenly she was available, you know, when, when <laughs> Facebook opened up where anyone could sign up for it after they wouldn't have just college students. I met my okay, wife on got, Facebook. So yeah, I feel okay, you. I can go. relate so, to that. Yeah. And you have, <laughs> so you have that connection. I think we all have different, depending on how old we are, we all have these different connections with these platforms but they do get archived because it's like, well, I don't really feel like sharing an entire photo album of photos with a bunch of quote unquote followers. I, these people are kind and this is all about like, whether this is just as a general user, I'm not talking about a high level influencer. I'm just thinking of somebody that wants to put out videos. They're not afraid to be on camera, but if you've been on the fence about it, yes, like you said, I see more now than ever with this app of people that seem to be like, just like, yeah, I can hit record on my phone and post it. It's actually so easy now that they're doing it more. And I think Instagram opened that gate mm -hmm. because stories and stuff. And you see older people actually understanding how stories work right. and they'll still mess up. There's still people I follow. They post every photo they post in their Instagram feed. They put a link in the description, which doesn't actively work. Thanks. Instagram. Of course. But in contrast with that, yeah, this app, I know that I'm talking about it and it's the new, it's the new thing in town. So it is that perspective. So it can just as easily shift and change. And there's this, like, I just, I think of being old as being bitter. Like, yeah, I know how these things go. They start getting ads every other video. And, but it's like, yeah, that could happen. Makes sense. Businesses do that. Or it might, they might actually have learned as well. It's the company, you know, the stockholders and stuff. They might say, let's do it different and just take over. And I know you mentioned Instagram is probably going to copy for sure. Cause they, they, they're, they're the ones that kind of kept me from going all in on Snapchat. Cause I was like, Oh, I care about stories. I like to be with my community of people. I know yeah. and that's where Instagram is. Mm -hmm. And that's the same way. And I think that's another, it's like the good and bad of TikTok. TikTok is sort of like my night, my, um, <laughs> like when you have like a, the guy that has a normal job at night, he's a dancer, you know, and it's kind of like that. It's like, yeah. Oh, you know, the moonlighting. I have, normal, I have my normal, right. I have my normal community on Instagram, but on night at night, I dance in the mirror <laughs> on TikTok, the stupid songs from the eighties, you know what I mean? And it's like, it's like a fun little alter ego yeah. and you don't have to necessarily bring all your other followers over. So there's other aspects that pull you in mm -hmm. that I think are kind of appealing, which I know is just sort of those things are short lived. Once you, all your friends know you're on TikTok, and you know, grandma jumps over there and now it's the new app. Like, Oh, I don't want to do these videos because my mom keeps watching them mm -hmm. and she's making and she's making me delete them or whatever. I don't want her to see what I do with my friends. That kind of stuff is always going to exist. I think what I've seen, though, and at least maybe it's just the communities I'm focusing in on, I'm like, wow, this seems a lot more positive where they're just flushing out the haters because they're just tired of it themselves. The people that are, because they're mm -hmm. like, we already know what it's like to be the outcast of, and the nobody's at Vine. Yeah. Let's just have fun within our community with, like, they have, this is within the app. You can do 
reaction videos built in right to the app. Mm-hmm. Like, think about trying to do a reaction video on YouTube and you've never edited a video in your life. How would you Impossible. do that? You can't. You can't. <laughs> Show yourself watching a TV screen. Like, would you even understand? Like, I'm just thinking of like an old timer just trying to get into YouTube. But I don't know if that answered the question completely. I know I, I keep, sorry, I keep going on these rants. And I understand that the app itself, depending on what someone's trying to do, like if they're a, like you, like a filmmaker, somebody that wants to create specific content, I do look at this as sort of a hole in the bucket. You mentioned Peter McKinnon, and I think that's why he kind of veered away from it because he's got other intentions for what he wants to put out into the world. And for me, I'm, I, like, I like the psychology of what captures people's attention. Yes. And it's that thing of like, well, my, my situation in life is opportunities where I have a little bit more downtime than I should. I guess now more than ever, I should maybe focus on writing a book or doing this other thing, and I'm screwing around watching TikTok. But I'm like, I don't know. I'm actually, I feel like I'm learning things because that's like I mentioned, I'm following people like psychologists and doctors and I'm learning these random little tidbits of facts that I can go and research on Google to make sure they're not just, you know, making it up just to make a funny joke or something. And it's making me actually, Gary Vee mentioned this. It's making me want to do more. Mm. but with a different intention where before I wanted to get a bunch of views on YouTube. I want to get a bunch of views. Otherwise I'm going to abandon it. Sort of like what you mentioned. You're sort of like, you feel like you missed the mark. Yep. But if you go into it, like this is just another Avenue of a way to express myself or these topics and share them to a different community that might never see them. Otherwise, like I feel like that's where TikTok comes in where we have an opportunity to educate or inform people that are up and coming young people. If that's the thing that you're into, but that's totally. the thing where I'm like, totally. well, I do have to acknowledge that it's a hole in the bucket as well. It could be a, like I was going to work on a YouTube video last night and I sat there and flipped through his TikTok all night. I was too tired to make a video <laughs> for YouTube. So I'm already part of the problem. <laughs> let, let me ask you something. This might be a little off topic, but you're, and I mean, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. Like you, you know, like I, I love you. I respect you as a creator. Like I can't tell you how many times I've come up with a cool idea or I've worked out a video kind of like if I'm like a sculptor with clay just by these phone calls with you and being able to talk to you. So I I truly value your opinion when it comes to um, creating content, even though just the term creating content sounds so businessy and snake oil salesman-y and I I hate saying it, but it is what it is. And it kind of ties into what I'm going to ask. I have this weird, I don't have OCD when it comes to anything, but when it comes to, I don't know where I got this. It's a, it's a filmmaking, old school filmmaking thing. Um, I'll mention Quentin Tarantino. He's going to retire at his next film that it'll be his 10th film. And he likes this nice, even number 10 films. That's the filmography. If you've never heard of Quentin Tarantino and you're 15 year old and you put your hand in a bin and take a random DVD out. If it's a Tarantino movie, he knows that he wants it to be a great one. Whichever one you're going to get is going to be quality because he's just put in 30 years that much of attention in 10 films. And he knows that the older you get, you start becoming irrelevant. Like I'll, I'll mention George Lucas or Steven Spielberg, who Spielberg hasn't had a hit the likes of Indiana Jones in a long time. <laughs> and he keeps remaking True. movies and trying to make it work, but it's like, Spielberg, your time has maybe come and gone. But you can't tell someone to retire. Clint Eastwood is still doing it. There's exceptions to the rules. But I, I too, romanticize this notion of the filmography. If you're a band, we have these albums, they're concept albums, and so much work went into it. With in- the internet... I struggle with, and this is a, a common theme with caring about what other people think, but I struggle with if someone f- goes on my channel, I don't want on YouTube for specificity, um, I don't want people to see a half-fast, in-the-moment, irrelevant piece of whatever. Like, oh, here's this... 2007 Dragon Ball Z video like why why do why would I want to I don't know I'm kind of embarrassed of that maybe and so with TikTok 
being that it's a, a clean slate, what are your thoughts and do you have this trouble, I don't know, this trouble with like, no, I want every TikTok that I make to be thoughtful and I don't want to say perfect, but like, I really, I respect Gary V so much because he's able to not romanticize one post. He's able to just get it on, move on, get it out, move on, get it out. And, and so he creates like this, these waves, these clouds, like they're just so this mass of content. And I always look at like each one as like, it needs to be a mini movie. Like I, I look at it like the reverence of it needs to be special. How do you, I mean, do you look at things like, oh, like, are you that precious about it ostensibly? Like, or is TikTok a kind of place where you can have 12,000? It doesn't really matter. Like it's, it's an ongoing conversation in the beginning of Snapchat in the very beginning, almost 10 years ago, about eight. Um, I would just post whatever I felt, you know, like a picture of me eating cereal, you know, a, a picture of a dog, a bird, like whatever. And now I'm very conscientious about should I post this or not? I don't like that. I should just have the freedom to do whatever I want, however I see fit, whenever I want. Um, on Twitter, I kind of have that OCD as well of like, I have this random thought about, about Betty White. Ah. Uh, I probably shouldn't say it though. That's weird. It's random. And instead I kind of keep it top. Like I'm precious about tweets and I see people who are successful on Twitter who are relevant, yeah. who have followers and they tweet all the time. It's like they always have an opinion about something. I want to be prolific. That's why I started getting out of my bubble and doing daily podcasts, which this is the 10th mm -hmm. one in a row. Thank you for that. Oh, wow. Um, I wanted to do it as a way to like build momentum and also not question a podcast, not be dependent or reliant on somebody's schedule or time. It, it, it allows me to be flexible and it allows me to be prolific. And a podcast yeah. is a great piece of art because I can break it down into many different pieces across many different platforms. On TikTok, I'm reticent to jump in because I don't want to, I'm precious about every singular video do you feel that way and how do you see someone like me saying fuck it i don't care let me just get it all out there because you never know what's going to stick and there's something to be said about the about the the quantity of something no i mean what do you think yeah all right i'm gonna this is the best this is the best way i can answer it I, yeah it's so hard not to go off on these tangents but i would say unlike snapchat Gosh, where am I going with this? Basically, this is an opportunity because I am like you. I, I do value. I'm like, well, I got to make this because I'm worried about. I'm, I'm, I understand Gary Vee's like, don't worry about what people say. I'm like, eh, I got like people. I got people that bother me that if I know they're watching my stuff and I don't want them to perceive my life differently or I don't want them to know too much about my life. And so that's my whole personal issue where I'm like constantly having those little things in the back of my head. So my first thought is like, oh, make my, <clears throat> I, I'll, I'll make a private account. You know, you can do that with TikTok. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. Right. And I would say the opportunity that TikTok unfolds for like someone that really values, this might not be the app for you. Maybe don't even download it and bother with it because it is going to be a distraction. It's like, cause you think about like a Steven Spielberg, Quentin Tarantino, if they were consuming six hours a day of TikTok, I wonder if they would have been able, they would probably, he probably would have spent 20 years writing one of his scripts because mm. what, mm. when do you write those things? Mm. The problem is, and I know, understand this guy, I guess I'm a little self-aware with some things, other things I'm completely oblivious to. I do understand that if I would have sat down last night, quiet room, no phone even near me. And I actually was working out um, projects in my mind on paper, maybe writing a script, writing a dialogue or writing a movie poetry or whatever it is that would have happened last night. Instead, I was consuming, consuming, consuming all this other media of other people's stuff. And so I know that in the, the short term, I'm like, boom, I can make an, a six second little video that looks just like this one that I saw. It's kind of funny, but it's hundred percent original compared to spending a year and a half making this movie I just wrote. Mm -hmm. And maybe a hundred people will show up for the premiere and so there's that whole thing of that psychology of like, Ooh, it's the long game. And that's where you have to be very to kind of be in control. of. If you want to make a movie, then you have to just completely eradicate this idea of, 
well, I want everyone to get, have a tent, my tent. I want, I want to have everyone's attention every single day until that movie's made. Mm-hmm. Well, that, you're going to need a team for that. You're going to need a Gary Vaynerchuk social media team if you want to do that, because that's what he's doing. He's going to meetings that he can't document on video of course. while his crew's making 67 posts a day. That's right. And he, but he's, and he's, because he's doing this thing down the road, which eventually I'm sure he'll own the Jets and that'll be the end of the story there. But the opportunity, I think, for someone like you, and because we do share a lot, some of the same perspectives of these things, it gives you a chance to literally, it's sort of like hanging out with a brand new friend that's so sort of like unbiased. Like they're like, I don't care what you do. Yeah, you want to smoke? You want to drink? I don't care. Oh, you don't like drink? Okay, cool. Like, and they, their opinion is now this is if you let, I haven't noticed any hater texts. I'm still new to it. So I might start getting them, but through the app on TikTok. But I'm like, if you could just post everything you're interested in, maybe it's all over the place. This is just an idea. And you get three views on every video and it's me and it's your, your daughter watching or whoever, you know, it's just like family members and friends. Okay. No harm, no foul. This wasn't your end game anyways. Like, you know, like this wasn't, this was just, but the thing that I think of is if you have information that you feel people want, should be listening to, it seems insane to say, Oh, here's the thing. It's completely free to use. You just have to hit this red button on your phone and use a couple hashtags and you know, Dwayne, the rock Johnson might see it, but whatever. I mean, don't, you can, don't, you might not want to bother with it because you want to make sure you have perfect videos. You know what I mean? Like, it just seems mm-hmm. like, wait, wh- I have opportunities to interact with like, like people that might help me in my future career, you know, like this mm. is, this is, that's where I think Twitter is so appealing because you could at any celebrity and they might write back to you. Yeah. They might. For sure. And that's the thing where here, the app is so new that it's like, you might make some content that Gary V watches and like, well, actually that guy's got a really good point with that. And I, I don't know anything about filmmaking, but I'm liking this. I'm going to repost it on my thing, you know? And that's the stuff like, I don't know if that's all the back, if that actually answers your question, but I feel like if, unless you're trying to plug up all the holes because you have this major goal that you're trying to do, then I would say, yeah, I totally just watch from afar. TikTok. You never have to hear the word or say the word the gang. But know that there's a huge community of people. Like, it's actually like I think of when they're like uh, leaving a city because, like, in a post apocalyptic movie, it's, I feel like it's floodgates are open of just people are just pouring into this app. Now, they have different intentions. They're trying to be famous and all those other stuff. Who cares about why they're there? They're there, and the three hours maybe they should be reading a book. I guess we could have, you know, you could worry about whether they're reading a book, but they're on TikTok watching somebody. Why not come across your face again? There's that guy again with Mohawk, you know, (laughs) like, yeah. And then all of a sudden they see you recommended on YouTube. Like, wait a second, wait a second, go back. I want to watch that. Why? What's this? I don't know. I've I've seen him on TikTok a few times. Boom. Now you're in, right? You're in one house that you never were going to be in and they're watching whatever. And that's the thing I'm like, this and I'm sure there, and this is the thing, I'm sure next year there's going to be another app that comes in or maybe it's Instagram 2.0 and it's like mm-hmm. a paid subscription and everybody's there. Okay. And cool. Remember that TikTok video or that TikTok podcast we t- did? You're going to scrap it. You're going to delete it. You know, like, but i um, thinking of all this though. I, I have, a, I've, this is just this random thing. It's kind of a bummer. I'm appreciating anyone that's listened this far. Cause I know it's at the end of a long conversation about this and hopefully you've already downloaded the app. Those of you that are listening, because it's insane to even think about it. just do it a couple of times and be like, eh, I'm over it. But I've had a lot of long distance relationships and people, this is so random, but it actually makes sense to me. People always talk about wanting to live on Mars. I want to go to space. I want to live in space. And I'm like, here's what's going to happen in space. This is no joke. Cause I live in space every day of my life. Uh-huh. Metaphorically. I'm in my house. Well, last night would be a perfect example of me on my space shuttle. I don't have friends around. There's nobody to hang out with late at night. Everyone's at home with their families. You know, my friends are older and stuff. And I'm just sitting in my house and I'm watching endless TikToks, And that's how I, I entertain myself on my space station. And I'm interacting because I'm leaving comments. It's all the same things. It's stuff you get with YouTube and other things, but it's so short and you can get through a lot of different connections. Mm. And I'm like, so basically I feel like I hung out with a bunch of people last night. I mean, that's kind of like maybe crazy sounding, but it's like, that's what people are going to do. If we ever do live in space, we're just going to be watching video screens and interacting because what the, other than just like doing like Mars gardening, I don't know what we're going to do up there, but like, 
this we're pre- if anything, the app is prepping you or at least your kids for what it's going to be like if they ever decide to go up into the space shuttle and it's just like so we're just getting a preview of what it's really going to be like it's, I, that's what i feel like where i'm this app it can be what you want it to be if you want it to be a total waste of time and totally like you know check out all the the super trending hot people that are on there and try to take their things and be the most famous person that uh, reacts to their videos or just make it as educational as you want. You, you might actually, I've never really honed in. I've, I've done a couple of filmmaking hashtags mm-hmm. and I found a couple cool channels that I'm like, these are pretty neat people because they're younger kids just getting into it. They're at a college. So they're documenting stuff that I'm kind of bitter and old and bored with documenting. Yeah. Cause I've yeah. seen it every day. Like, Oh, a new tripod. Okay. But he's documenting like, look at this new cool tripod. It's got this hydraulic head. I'm like, Oh, that's actually kind of cool. What brand is that? <laughs> but that's where I'm like, maybe that's me all the time. Like, this is my way to see what, it, what the kids are up to these days, you know, but yeah. I'm a little bit more aware of that. The whole, the whole in the bucket mentality. Cause I know there's other stuff. Like, I don't think I'm at this point going to be known for my TikTok legacy, but Famous last because... words right there. Those are some famous last words. Yeah. <laughs> Don't count your chickens. Yeah. I mean, you two could shut down tomorrow and like, what legacy do I have there? You know, like, I don't know. So that's the thing where it's all short lived. So hmm. I would say Steve Martin did it. You ever see those commercials for the masterclass series? Yeah. Yeah. As a matter they, of fact, dude, I love I, every time I see those, I'm like, I want to watch it. Steve Martin has one. And mm-hmm. in his preview, he's like, People always come up to me and say, how do I get an agent? How do I do this? And he's like, shouldn't the first question be, how do I be good at what I do? Which is exactly my mind. I'm like, that is so perfect. Mm. Like, great. You want to be popular on YouTube or you want to be popular in in the podcast arena. Great. Just be as good as you can. And the audience can get, we'll figure out the algorithm to get the viewers and the listeners in. But if you're, if we're like me, I feel like I've constantly tried to chase the views mm-hmm. that I've sort of been meh. I've sort of been wishy-washy on how knowledgeable I really am. And I'm like, why don't I just master my skills and say, and that's where I go. This isn't all random going back to TikTok. I'm sort of, the, I'm looking at the views cause I'm interested in the analytics, but I'm like, I don't really care because yeah, in my heart, I'm like, yeah, YouTube's still my, my main yeah. investment, mm-hmm. but it is there. And I just think of, what I experience in everyday life, people get old, they retire. If you're not influencing younger people, then your information is going to die off with us old timer filmmakers, you know, because there's going to be that kid that is a part of this world of TikTok, but he still has this nostalgia for the, what it was like to be a filmmaker in the eighties. That's so funny. What would it be like to be a filmmaker in the early two thousands? Cause they were born in 2010, right? You know, like that's yes. 10 years ago, by the way, we're winding down here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, thank this, you. this is awesome. Um, I'll say this, and then I want to get your last thoughts, and we'll we'll wrap it up here. Also, <laughs> um, my battery's dying on my Mac, so I'll I'll put I'll plug it in a bit. Um, I have been doing this daily podcast, of which people are listening to, I think. And my, if I had a New Year's resolution for 2020, yeah, it was to do a daily podcast. I usually. I think I, w- I went off Twitter one year or I posted like a photo every day on Instagram for one year. And like I usually – it's something about the clean slate that's like helps me go, propels me. And then you get momentum and, you, and then it just becomes automated. Um, but the podcast world, I'm not a Spotifyer. I'm not a SoundClouder like you said. Mm-hmm. I Those are just the platforms. What you said about Steve Martin – I might just name this episode that, you know, like, how do I be good at something first? Um, We forget that. I certainly forget that. I think my wife just got home. Um, And it always comes down about that. For me, I'm trying to, I want to be one of the best podcasters there was. Um, Communicator, someone that, is able to connect with humans. So if I had a resolution this year, it was, I want to strengthen my connections and my relationships with people. Not, I want to be, I want to network, you know? No, I want, I want to talk to cool people. I want to have relationships with cool people. 
And 10 days into this podcast, it's happened. And I've been using this art form, this medium, and it's people have been DMing me, messaging me, uh, messaging me on Twitter, which never happens. I've been having phone calls. I've been having some meetings. And in my community in Austin, people want to come on the show. And it's cool because I think they want to promote something, which is cool. But I get something out of it. They get something out of it. And I've always wondered how photographers, how it works. A professional photographer who takes pictures of models in an artistic way. And I figured it out. I've asked them. I I made a little movie about a photographer. I'm still editing. And I asked them, so how does this, like, work? Is it a quid pro quo? Like, you know, are you paying the model? Does she pay you to get her photo taken? And he told me it's mutually beneficial, you know, uh, they want work. I want to do this. This is kind of like what I do for fun. And so, you know, it's win-win. And I was like, hmm, I didn't know that. I thought somebody got paid here. And maybe professionally for a magazine, you do. <laughs> but mm-hmm. it's like the podcast. Somebody would ask me, well, how do you get guests? And do you pay them? <laughs> no. Like, we're having a chat. I don't get paid right now and they're not getting paid. I'm certainly not paying them. They get to promote their thing and I scratch their back. They scratch mine, I guess. And that's it. It's the same thing. I want to, I am pursuing mastery at, at this. And what's cool is wherever I put it on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, doesn't matter. Blogs. I transcribe this audio and I, I put it in a blog It doesn't, this is the whole ethos of what Gary Vee is talking about and why he's so prolific is he's the communicator and these distribution direct to consumer platforms are just that. They're just channels on a TV network that potentially, if you're engaging enough and if you're cool enough or if you're fun enough or whatever your thing is, that you can leverage to affect your real life. And I think that is the nucleus at the end of the day with what we're trying to accomplish. Like, hopefully, because your legacy is going to be your your connections and relationships with people. That's going to be your legacy. Mm -hmm. And maybe your YouTube is a way to magnetize people into your circle. Like, now me and you are friends. Well, it's because of YouTube. But not because of YouTube, but because of YouTube, you know, and or Facebook Mm -hmm. or whatever it was. And, um... I'm doing that with this podcast as well. And I'm going to try to do that with TikTok and LinkedIn and Medium and whatever, Blogspot. (laughs) I'm just kidding. But um, MySpace, like (laughs) at the end of the day, yeah, I want to be able to connect with people. I want to be able to have a phone call with someone who was out of my league, like a Casey Neistat, because he maybe he saw my TikTok. And maybe he thinks I can do something mm-hmm. for him. He sees something in me that other people don't want to admit and maybe something that I can't see in myself. And mm-hmm. for some people, I think they look at it as like a means to an end and they can use that to sell merch or they can use that to push an app or to sell a product or service. If And I am. I'm truly in this to have a good time, to have a good time, like, and we forget that. It's not about well, how do you monetize? Somebody asked me this yesterday. Well, how do you monetize on TikTok? I'm like, I don't know. It's it's the same way we've always monetized. You know, it's either you push a product or, you know, you push a brand or, you know, AdSense. It's what it's going to be. Sorry, I've been rambling. Um, but those are my <laughs> closing thoughts is at the end of the day, this is about human relationships. This is about, well, maybe this can get me a job. It's always an ends to a mean And, you know, I think people, kids are doing it because, well, in high school, it's cool. It's like the party. What did you do last Saturday night? Well, now it's like you show up at eight in the morning and it's like, look what Fred did on TikTok. It's a conversation starter. Um, And so I guess like it doesn't change in that way. Um, What you said about Steve Martin, it always goes to back back to that. TikTok might get you an agent, but are you going to create a TikTok and sign up for it and put in the work to get an agent? Like, how about you get good at something first? You said it best. Mm-hmm. So those would be my closing thoughts, man. But uh, we've spent 90 minutes talking about TikTok. Anything <laughs> else that maybe you wrote down or something that you want to get in before we sign off here? I just wanted to mention, I kind of interrupted you, the key 
thing that was you meant, didn't mention with the YouTube videos. The reason these relationships were built were because of videos that got made. Not video ideas we both shared, and we just emailed each other and said, hey, I, I, I heard about you through the grapevine. No, we actually posted videos. You were posting stuff on YouTube and Facebook when I came across your stuff, and I was having my videos. Whether or not we loved the stuff we were posting, we can look back, and even with my higher standards or whatever you want to call perfectionism, I know that I would love to redo a bunch of old videos, but they're out there and they exist. And, you know, I guess the new terminology is, oh, it's so cringy. But I'm like, dude, cringe gets <laughs> relationships because mm. you, if you worry too much, if we, if I would have worried so much, but all that to say is that's, that's the key feature, which is back to this app and talking about any social media outlet for somebody that wants to create content or create art or create like, I like how you always word movies being a, a dream language and stuff. Yeah. I think that would be perfect on TikTok, by the way. I'd love mm. to see that in my feed sometime. <laughs> but just because I think people need to hear this, if it gives you an avenue to make these things much quicker than to see, like you said, you're editing a, a video right now. It's long form, so it's going to end up probably on YouTube. But, mm -hmm. you know, if it was something that doesn't necessarily need to take a week, those relationships will definitely get built faster if you're engaging with people that you're that are that are also creating stuff. But if you're not creating stuff, then you're just a fan, and that's what I guess. So that's right. It was that's a long winded way to say you don't want fans, you want friends. So you need to be both doing something at least some whether literal or mental sameness. I would say, but I'll, let's say thanks for having me on here and chat and i wondered i list i've seen your podcast or some of them go like up there like two hours i'm like oh man how can you do this to me i don't have two hours and now i see how it happens you see how it happens because we both go on these pe your people go on tangents and so i hope this was helpful for somebody i, I was going to tell you i already i uploaded a, a tiktok while we were doing this so just just to keep that in <laughs> mind i don't know how many movies you've edited while oh, we've been talking man. but yeah Oh, yeah, um, this is one. I got a 90-minute feature that came out of this as well. And God knows what oh, else. Oh, perfect. Oh, you're right. You got it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, it's but crazy. Yeah. It's really crazy. Um, a new yeah, a new TV channel just opened up. It's called TikTok. <laughs> and they're much. accepting applications from everybody. That's the best way to look at it, man. Um, <laughs> before I forget, if people made it this far, and I think they did because we, we really got somewhere here. I haven't heard people talk about TikTok uh, like this and break it down in ways that I can understand and relate to relating it to history and experience. And people are going to want to follow you, man. So where can they find you on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, where are you at and all the things? How can they support it's you? It's going to be, um, um, if you'd like to watch some of my stuff, I definitely am trying to get, you know, YouTube is still my bread and butter. I like, I like investing in there. It's not top is the easiest way. K N O P T O P. And that's something else. I'm not going to try to, I'm on those, all the social medias with that same username, but I'm really going to go out of my way not to promote my TikTok because I feel like it'll be more fun if I know, I don't know who's watching. If I know my cousins and my mm. nieces and nephews and my brothers and sisters around there, I'm going to yeah. start filtering stuff. You're right. I just want to share um, things that are interested in. So that's where you can find me. Thanks for listening. You're right. Dave Knopp, thanks for being on the show. I love this. I love you. Yeah. Um, this is the way I close it off. Keep a force field around your heart, brother. I love you. Thanks, man. Good luck. My, my pleasure. <laughs>